Well, good morning to all of our viewers in DC throughout the nation and the world. Welcome to our newest installation, Pandemic Perspectives on Trade. Today's program is focused on business trade and investment opportunities in Saudi Arabia, what you need to know. My name is Andrew Gelfuso. I'm the director of the World Trade Center, Washington, DC. We're located at the Ronald Reagan Building and International Trade Center. We're so pleased to bring you this informative discussion. We couldn't have done it without the support of our co-collaborators, Mr. Delano Roosevelt, President and CEO of the US Saudi Business Council, Mr. John Duke Anthony, founder and CEO of the National Council on US Arab Relations, and Mr. Patrick Mancino, Executive Vice President at the National Council on US Arab Relations. We're living in strange times and I'd be remiss if I did not take a moment to thank all of our essential workers and health professionals. When COVID hit us in mid-March, as a trade center, we pivoted to offering virtual programming, which has really brought us closer to our global partners in a new way. We launched something called the Messages of Hope campaign, offering members of the diplomatic corps in DC a platform where over 50 ambassadors have offered uplifting, hopeful, and inspirational messages to our followers and to our local and global communities. To give you a bit of background on our work here, the World Trade Center is the programming arm of the Ronald Reagan Building and International Trade Center. The Reagan Building is operated by a public-private partnership between TCMA and the U.S. General Services Administration. Our mission is based on a congressional mandate to promote trade, and I'm here today with our long-term partner, the National Council on U.S. Arab Relations. Before I turn it over to Dr. Anthony, I'd like to mention the next, pro the next program coming up is October 27th, featuring the Ambassador of Croatia. We're also pleased to announce our signature annual Winter National Embassy Showcase will premiere virtually this year on December 7th. To learn more about these and other events, please visit our website at rrbitc.com. And now it's my distinct honor and privilege to introduce our partner for today's program and longtime friend, Dr. John Duke Anthony. For nearly, four, for nearly 14 years, we've collaborated to host an annual world-class policymakers forum, along with other high-level educational forums. Dr. Anthony is the founding president and CEO of the National Council on U.S. Arab Relations, an American nonprofit, non-governmental educational organization. In 2000, His Majesty the King of Morocco knighted Dr. Anthony, bestowing upon him the Medal of Honor, Usam Alouit, the nation of Morocco's highest award of excellence. Dr. Anthony is the former chairman of the United States Department of State, Near East and North Africa area and country studies program. The principal US government center tasked with educating, training and preparing American foreign service officers and other personnel for service in the Arab region. Dr. Anthony, I now turn the program over to you to introduce today's distinguished speakers and to kick off our discussion. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege and a pleasure to be with you and with uh, resource specialists uh, for the next hour. And it's appropriate uh, that you make reference to the Ronald Reagan Building and International Trade Center having global partnerships. Because here we have a country being focused on today that indeed has global uh, partnerships itself, global interests, global needs, global concerns global foreign policy uh, goals and its uh, issues and challenges uh, facing its uh, peoples. We can think of uh, Saudi Arabia uh, in the following way. Uh, at the global level, of course, there are the five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council, the United States, Great Britain, France, <coughs> China, and uh, Russia. Uh, but go beyond that and name the next country that has as wide ranging an impact and an effect on the lives and on the dreams and on the material well-being of as wide a swath of humanity. Uh, you would be hard pressed to come up with another country than Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia in this regard can be likened in many ways to a continent more than a country. It has 13 neighbors. Uh, America uh, has five, but most Americans think we have only two. Um, and yet, what if we had 13? How different would be the realities that we face on a day-to-day -day basis in a continuing uh, fashion? So here's a country that is seen more as an object than an actor. 
an object, more or less in the eyes of many as a collection of gas stations rather than a country or a mountain of money rather than people who are the descendants of fantastic ancestors who have contributed mightily uh, to the richness of world cultures, world uh, civilizations. Uh, this lesser known aspect of the kingdom is unfortunate because it leaves people far less uh, in, well informed, insightful, knowledgeable and understanding and able to critically analyze the issues at stake in that bilateral relationship. And yet this is a relationship now going on eight decades and it is one of the longest in uh, the United States developed uh, relations uh, with the so-called emerging economies. And Saudi Arabia is unique in this other way. It's only one of five countries on the planet uh, that uh, in the emerging economies did not emerge from under a Western oriented uh, imperial uh, regime. Uh, all others did. So this gives Saudi Arabia a degree of self-confidence of position in place in pride, in history, and contemporary affairs that go little notice and yet uh, provide one with windows on which to understand uh, its needs and its challenges. And we have here three individuals who are superbly uh, credentialed to help us uh, strip uh, some of the layers away from this fog of uh, lack of knowledge and misunderstanding uh, that will improve our capacity to be fairer and more effective in our relations uh, with the kingdom. They'll be focusing heavily on the private sector dynamics, in terms of trade, investment, and uh, technology cooperation and industrialization, as well as joint commercial ventures. Uh, our moderator for this particular session is none other than Delano Roosevelt. And it's hard to describe in a few words who this man is. Of course, by the name, you uh, would be uh, correct and get an A plus if you divine that, well, he must be related to Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Indeed, he is. He's the lineal grandson of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And his own father served six terms in Congress, uh, as well as was the United States ambassador to international organizations in Geneva. Now, Dell grew up uh, on the West Coast and uh, particularly uh, centered uh, in later life around uh, Long Beach, uh, California. He had his education there, his formative influences on his upbringing, but then he also had this East Coast uh, dynamic to his upbringing. When his father was for six terms in the United States Congress, and then to globalize his perspective the more, about uh, living in uh, Europe uh, when his father was ambassador there. And if that's not enough for one person's uh, well preparation uh, to handle international challenges and issues, and particularly the bilateral relationship between Saudi Arabia and the United States, Dell has lived in Saudi Arabia for many years. And he uh, was the American commercial uh, uh, a development director for the Ali Reza uh, conglomerate family, which involved in, in trade and uh, investment and services throughout the kingdom uh, and abroad. Uh, he also served on the board of uh, directors of the Eastern Province uh, American Business Association, uh, which is sometimes known as the, a branch of the American Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And that Chamber of Commerce was centrally involved with all of the other central, uh, Chambers of Commerce of the six Gulf Cooperation Council countries of Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates. Uh, in his own additional uh, capacity, Adele was elected uh, as a city councilman uh, to the Long Beach City Council he focused on matters pertaining to the environment, to energy, to electrical uh, generation, as well as uh, to education. A more rounded uh, background and, and experience in education uh, for a person in public service would be hard to imagine. We're honored to have Delano Roosevelt to chair moderate this session.
with our two Saudi Arabian friends. Del Roosevelt. Dr. John Duke, uh, that was so kind. Uh, I hope that I, uh, uh, I'll spend the rest of my time here on the planet uh, trying to live up to your, to your wonderful words and support. Uh, uh, I thank you very much. Uh, my friends, uh, welcome today. Um, we have a, you are going to be part of a very unique opportunity today, um, uh, which I'll get into in just a few seconds. Uh, 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 John Duke Anthony, Dr. John Duke was correct in, in uh, everything that he said. I had spent uh, the last 15 years of my life um, as director of new business development for the Haley Reza family. But now, uh, I, uh, as of last November, I am the new president and CEO of the U.S.-Saudi Business Council, located here in Washington, D.C. This organization has had a, a tremendous, uh, tremendously successful history for the last 25 years. It is a 501c nonprofit organization that exists solely for the purpose of connecting U.S. business uh, with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, both in uh, uh, business opportunities with government and in the private sector. So for me, this was a natural to, to come here and, and um, work with the terrific team that I have working here at the U.S.-Saudi Business Council. Um, uh, and uh, it, it fits well uh, as this year in 2020 is also um, uh, notably the 75th anniversary of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the United States of America creating a wonderful relationship through the first king of Saudi Arabia, King Abdulaziz ibn Saud, who sent a letter of invitation to uh, a fellow that, that uh, I'm very fond of in my family, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who was at that time was attending the Yalta Conference with with Winston Churchill and uh, Joe Stalin. Uh, and so FDR did indeed respond to the, the kind invitation and met with uh, uh, King Abdulaziz on the Great Bitter Lake in February of 1945 aboard the USS Quincy. And during that time, they set the, the tone, the relationship, the foundation for what exists now uh, between these two great nations. They spoke of agriculture. They spoke of gas and oil. They spoke of uh, business, of, of airplanes. Uh, the the King, King Abdulaziz asked my grandfather what it was like to fly in an airplane. And then FDR sent him a then state-of-the-art DC-3 from the old uh, Douglas plant out of Long Beach, California. Um, now, whether that was a, a something that FDR was thinking uh, with foresight on, thinking that he'll, he'll fly in this airplane and buy more planes from the United States, or whether he just did it because he wanted the king to enjoy the, uh, the wonders of flight, who knows? But uh, it, it, that foundation has grown and has prospered today. And uh, I'm very proud to be part of a continuing uh, legacy that is committed to, to maintaining the opportunities and encouraging opportunities for international cross-border transactions between the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the United States of America. For my friends, in my humble opinion, uh, this, this opportunity for commerce is really uh, part of the, of the glue that allows for continued peace, uh, not only between our countries, but in the region. Uh, I'm a big fan of peace through commerce. And if we get enough of us working together and we get to know each other as, as people and individuals and our families get to know each other's families, uh, it, it can only end well in those types of situations. As I mentioned, we have a unique opportunity today. On to our business. Our business today is going to be giving you all an opportunity to have a have a, a very unique insight into uh, two two areas of, uh, of Saudi Arabia, which most of us really don't know a whole lot of a lot about. Uh, those of us who know 
the existence of the uh, commercial officer's uh, uh, position and responsibilities out of the uh, Royal Embassy of Saudi Arabia based here in Washington, DC. And then also we're gonna be looking into uh, something new. And that something new is the new Ministry of Investment. And we have an individual who I will be introducing shortly um, who will be going into depth on what that means. What does the Ministry of Investment do? What are its responsibilities? And um, how does this relate to you, the, the participant in this conversation today? But first, I will start by talking about a, uh, a friend, a co-worker, uh, uh, and someone who we really are blessed to have here um, in the United States, who's been here quite some time. Uh, I question maybe he's probably more American than I am. He certainly speaks English better than I do. There's no question about that. Mr. Ahmed Abu Zanada is the commercial attache from the Royal Embassy of Saudi Arabia here in Washington, DC. And I can tell you from a personal, no, on a personal note, that there has never been a time where we as an organization or in my prior life of working with the Ali Reza family uh, have called on Ahmed for, a, for some help, for some guidance, for direction, where he has not immediately uh, snapped to and, and provided uh, all that he can to help support uh, us in our pursuit of, of, uh, uh, of the guidance or direction. And uh, he is an amazing fellow who I think you're all going to enjoy listening to. And now we're all going to hear a little bit more about what does the commercial attache actually do for a living, uh, uh, which I, I, I wish we had two hours today, but unfortunately we don't. So with that, I'm gonna hand it directly over to Ahmed. Ahmed, welcome to the conversation and we look forward to your words. Thank you, Dil. And, uh... Thank you all for attending. Uh, I would like to start with, uh, give you a brief on this relation that we are having with the United States. So uh, first I would like to thank you all for attendance. And uh, I would like to say a few words about the relationship or rather I call it the friendship between our two nations. As Dill mentioned, our relationship started more than 75 years ago and only last year, our bilateral trade exceeded $32 billion. Uh, a few years ago, His Royal Highness Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman unveiled the Saudi Vision 2030 plan with goal of creating a vibrant society, thriving economy and ambitious uh, nation. Saudi Arabia being an, in a strategic location represent a lucrative market and great hub to access three most populous continents, Asia, Europe, and Africa, through which a third of global trade passes. To aid this goal, Saudi Arabia helped establish the AARSGA regional body, along with other African coastal state of the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden, to coordinate and cooperate on political, economic, security, cultural, and environmental issues in this vital area. There is also big potential in creating a deep export import network across the Americans led by Arab Americans and Arab of Latin America's successful long term business is built on strong personal relations. And the Arab community in the Americans can play a big part in building these bridges. Saudi Arabia has been a world leader in energy for years and our plentiful readily available Natural resources and raw materials make Saudi Arabia an efficient springboard for manufacturing and industrial development across emerging key priority sectors and energy intensive uh, industry. Our energy industry is evolving to include uh, renewable. Uh, just recently, Saudi Aramco has produced and uh, sent the world first shipment of uh, blue ammonia to Japan. Our mining sector has an untapped potential estimated to be $1.33 trillion. The Saudi financial institutions are some of the most reliant in the world and uh, Saudi businessmen and women are some of the biggest investors around the world. We have 
uh, a big potential to extend Saudi financial service to America, uh, Arab partnership startups. To name just a few examples of the defining steps that we've taken in just a few short years since uh, between 2030 started. Uh, we recently opened uh, to tourists for the first time. So uh, all Americans and international community can visit Saudi Arabia and enjoy uh, our country and see it from our eyes. We are the first Arab nation to host the G20 summit in 2020. We've opened a new sectors to 100% for, uh, foreign ownership where my colleague Abdurrahman will uh, discuss Saudi Arabia was the top uh, reformer and improver among 190 economies in the World Bank uh, banks. Women, ease of doing business and uh, law, 2020 report. The World Economic Forum ranked Saudi Arabia among the top 40 economic worldwide in, the, uh, in its global competent, uh, competitiveness report. Most importantly, these social reforms are important indicators of our economic transformation expanding economy, partners, uh, participation and integration of women and young Saudis into the workforce, increase our global competitive, uh, com competitive, uh, competitiveness as we evolve uh, our economic landscape into one that inspire confidence and foster ease, uh, making, uh, making it easier than ever to do business in the kingdom. Uh, I would like to conclude by confirming the importance of our friendship the evolving of our nation, heralds and uh, an evaluation and uh, evolution in our partnership, exciting new sectors, uh, emerging and driving private sector growth, foreign direct investment in, is surging forward and our culture and heritage are open for visitors to explore, creating exciting opportunities for Saudi citizens and foreign investors alike and business of all sizes. Uh, I would like to thank you all for meeting us and to uh, giving me this opportunity and uh, to highlight our office in Washington DC here at the embassy is uh, a phone call or a visit away. If you happen to need to ask any question or if you need to know anything about this special relation, I call it between our great nations, uh, we have an open door and you can call me anytime, call Dil, Drahman, all of us, we're here to help and support. We are really looking forward to have uh, more to, co to come next year. It was a very hard year, but I think it's uh, it gave us a time to think of how we can re-launch uh, the new year to uh, more successful and uh, greater relation. Inshallah, that's yeah. wonderful. Thank you so much, Ahmed. Uh, it was very informative. And I might add, before I introduce uh, our next collaborator, I, I need to, to state that uh, Ahmed works, uh, does work uh, for the Saudi Embassy as the commercial attache. And uh, the, at, the, uh, at the helm of the Saudi Embassy now, we are all blessed and we all kind of work for as well. Uh, a wonderful individual, uh, Her Royal Highness Princess Rima, uh, and she is the uh, U uh, Saudi ambassador to the United States. Uh, and I'd like to just on a personal note, uh, let you all out there know that, th that I have not met an individual who is more of a force of life for uh, building these bridges of friendship and opportunity between these two great nations. Uh, and uh, we all here, all of us here at the uh, US Saudi Business Council are so thankful that uh, sh she is in the position that she is in. Uh, she, uh, Ahmed has just mentioned an open door policy. Uh, I think her door is, is uh, it's a 24 seven open door policy. Uh, when we first met, she gave me her cell number to text her with issues, which was, uh, was uh, uh, overwhelming. Uh, so we are very thankful that to you, Ahmed, and the leadership that you have there at the embassy and all of your effort. 
uh, and, uh, and and working together will truly uh, uh, result in in terrific opportunities for for both nations. Now, our next our next guest uh, that we I would like to introduce to you is is somewhat new on the scene here in the United States. Uh, Mr. Abdul Rahman Bakir is part of his title is Vice President, U.S. Vice President for the Ministry of uh, Investment for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. This is a new uh, ministry, relatively, um, and there is a program that I think that he'll be eager to speak to us all about called Invest Saudi. I can tell you that Abdul Rahman, uh, even though he's been here a relatively short time, we have become personal friends. We've become business associates. Uh, and uh, uh, he is where he, he, I don't know how he keeps his pace in life um, and maintains his, his family as one day he's in Iowa, the next day he's in Washington, DC, the next day he's in South America. And he always responds uh, via WhatsApp uh, uh, within minutes. So I don't know how he does it, uh, but he does it. And with that, I will uh, pass it over to you, Abdul Rahman, uh, for your kind words. Thank you very much, uh, Del, for your kind and uh, sweet words. It's an honor to have it from you. And uh, friends and colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all in the state side. And good afternoon to you all in the Saudi and the Arab side. I would like just to start by saying that uh, economic and social transformation in Saudi uh, is unlocking new investment opportunities at an accelerated rate in a strategically located G20 economy. Uh, driven by strong promotion and economic reform through the Invest Saudi brand, uh, the kingdom's economy has attracted record levels of FDIs. In recognition of these achievements, the General Investment Authority, SAGIA, was elevated to a dedicated Ministry of Investment, a historic first for the kingdom. And I cannot recall or I cannot think about uh, many countries with a dedicated uh, Ministry uh, of Investment. This just shows you the importance uh, that the country is uh, focused on when it comes to international investors and being an advocate for you. For this, I would like to take the opportunity to uh, thank uh, Mr. Del Roosevelt and Ahmed Abu Znada for being a key strategic partner for us here when we started on the ground. We just started in May, and I have to say, without them, without their support and guidance, we wouldn't be on the same uh, pace that Del mentioned. Uh, so they have put us on speed, and that's the beauty of working all together. We are here to serve all the international companies uh, from all aspects. So it's just not just focused purely on them coming into Saudi. You know, we are happy to listen what are their aspirations, how we can succeed with them. And that's why we work closely with the US Business Council and with the commercial office. Now, uh, month by month in terms of FDI, the growth in Saudi in Q1 uh, 2020 mirrored the pattern of the disruption of COVID-19 that has uh, hit the global economy. Uh, January and February, in fact, saw the strong momentum, but growth began to slow down in March. Despite this, 348 new international companies were granted investor licenses in Q1. Uh, that's a 19% annual increase compared to the same period in 2019, and a 20% quarter and quarter increase from the final three months of 2019. So this was Saudi Arabia's strongest quarter of inward investments since 2010. In Q2, uh, the Ministry of Investment uh, Emerging Sectors, which includes education, financial services, and entrepreneurship, continued to see the highest number of new foreign investment projects in, in Saudi, with the US being the top country of, with total of 54 new FDI projects in the kingdom followed by India and uh, the UK. This just indicates that the global investor remains positive about the continued potential of the kingdom's opportunities and uh, as the economies transition to post COVID-19 conditions. Now with an expanded mandate of the ministry, uh, the new ministry has uh, expanded its remit and now oversees the kingdom's full investment ecosystem 
So the ministry will re-energize the landscape, streamlining the investor journey and drive the continuous growth of the kingdom's country. Uh, this will be done through consolidation of momentum created by the Invest Saudi plan, uh, leveraging Vision 2030 and the kingdom's strategic location and its young, uh, highly educated and ambitious population as a key strategic assets. And uh, spread headed by a well known, highly regarded uh, new minister, His Excellency Minister Khaled Al Falah, who previously served as the Minister of Energy and the Chairman of uh, Aramco. So, based on this ongoing mission, I would like just to tap uh, on five key elements when it comes to the Invest Saudi brand. Uh, first, uh, promoting Saudi Arabia as a leading investment destination. So the Invest Saudi brand brings together all government entities across all sectors to promote Saudi as a future ready investment destination. In fact, if you had the chance to visit our headquarter in Saudi and you go uh, to our building, you will notice that there is a, a small booth for every government entity. So you wouldn't need to go to uh, each building. You just need to go to one building and you have all uh, the government entity sitting there for you. Uh, second, uh, we are responsible about developing a vibrant investment ecosystem. So this happens through uh, working with the public and private sector to identify opportunities, foster partnership, and also shape the regulatory improvements and develop innovative solution through policy changes. Third, we support the businesses throughout the investment journey. So uh, the Ministry of Investment supports you through, uh, from identifying opportunities, conducting feasibility studies, and helping you to set up your operation and get your license, uh, and as well the aftercare services. So in a nutshell, we help you uh, pre-setup, during the setup, post-setup. And I would like to take this also uh, opportunity to tell you that one of our recent reforms is that our license now is issued only in uh, three hours. Uh, Two, two years ago, it was three days. So uh, that's a big difference. And regardless when you apply, even if you apply in the weekend or on a working day, on a holiday, it's all, if your documents are ready, you get it in three hours. Uh, fourth, we are safeguarding the evolution of growth in the Saudi investment landscape. So we'll oversee the entire investment ecosystem. And that's why we remain the source of information and advice for uh, current and future partners that that uh, they're having or are they facing any challenge in the business climate. So MISA will work continuously to educate you and the international investors community on why, how, and where uh, they can invest in Saudi. Uh, fifth, we also focus on communicating the value of FDIs when it comes to Saudi uh, audience and engage local investors. So we try to close uh, the information gap around the kingdom's understanding how investments can help localize content, facilitate knowledge transfer and create jobs. And ultimately we uh, match make international uh, investors with local uh, partners as well. I would like to conclude by saying that the opportunities for uh, US businesses in Saudi are numerous and the Saudi Ministry of Investment tasked with attracting and developing diversified companies and in the investment into the country through soft and hard support. We serve and we will serve any of you here today that want to understand, explore and pursue the kingdom opportunities and ultimately establish a presence. Success of your business is success to us. And that's why we are establishing on the ground an office of the Ministry of Investment in the East Coast and the West West and also in the West Coast to build on the historically strong economic relationship. Our team is dedicated to ensuring that there is an additional and accessible path to you and succeed in Saudi. Please do not hesitate to get in touch uh, with me, with Ahmed, uh, with the US Business Council and uh, Mr. Roosevelt, and we'll all be here for you uh, to help you. We are making Vision 2030 a reality. The world is taking a notice. Uh, we're always seeking to build on our relationship with key international partners. And we believe that the US businesses are the heart of this plan. Thank you very much. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much, Abdul Rahman, for your for your very informative uh, and heartfelt words. So, my friends, you've heard now from uh, Invest Saudi, which is the the business development uh, arm uh, for the Ministry of Investment. You've heard from the commercial officer from the uh, uh, Royal 
uh, Embassy of Saudi Arabia, and you've heard a bit about from the Business Council. So let's boil it down just for a second. And also, I might add, uh, where we all end up going to uh, at the end of the day, Dr. John Duke Anthony, who is a living library and resource of everything GCC and, and, and Arabia. Uh, 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 he's, he is prevented from ever retiring, uh, of, of ever uh, deciding to slow down because we, we need him to, to keep going as, a, as the resource uh, above all resources. Um, so this is, this is how it works. You're a company, a uh, matter of fact, um, uh, I, I'm going to get, we're going to get into the Q and A. And by the way, if anyone has any questions, there's a Q and A box and please just type it in. Uh, if, if we don't have time to address all of the questions, uh, during our webinar today, we will get back to you. We will get the answers to those questions and we will get back to you. Also, there'll be links on all of our websites for you to review this um, presentation uh, and discussion as well for at a later time. But I need to just kick off here because Jeffrey asks a, a, a terrific question that'll lead right into this. What is the best way to formally bridge our mature corporate clients that are interested in pursuing growth in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia uh, while serving the Vision 2030? desire to achieve diversified economic development and industrialization. Jeffrey, that's a great question. And you've just one give us an opportunity to lead right into this. You're an American company. You know that there's that there's opportunity in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. That's a given. The question in most American companies' minds are, my gosh, how do I navigate this roadmap into uh, into the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, I've never been to Saudi Arabia. Uh, it's very mysterious. It seems complicated. Uh, and uh, I just don't know how to do that. Therefore, um, we haven't pursued uh, opportunities there before. Well, that's where initially uh, the US Saudi Business Council can possibly be of tremendous service to you. And working with us, we can help um, you determine doing a 60,000 foot uh, uh, review um, of the business opportunity. We will have discussions with you as what it is that you do. What do you manufacture? What goods and services can you provide? Uh, we can do a marketing study, our own in-house marketing study to determine how many people are selling these items there now. Are they importing them? Are they manufacturing them there and so on? And we can answer a, a number of your questions to help you as the American organization become more comfortable with the idea of doing business there, uh, exporting, and, and hopefully at some point uh, consider manufacturing your product there. Because once you're manufacturing in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, you have this incredible opportunity uh, of, of exporting your goods into a region that would be very expensive to do here. And once you're manufacturing there, you're undercutting the competition by a good 20, 25%. And now you're, you're, you're selling your goods and services from literally Morocco to India down to jo Johannesburg, South Africa, all coming from Saudi Arabia. With tremendous support, then we take you to the Invest Saudi, to Abdul Rahman. We say, we have done some, we have a great candidate here, Abdul Rahman, and a good concept, and we've already determined that there is a need and opportunity for offtake of their products. And Abdul Rahman then puts it into high gear and will help us source out uh, where to take this next, getting your getting all of the mechanical details of, of being able and being ready to do business in Saudi Arabia, uh, which will be done through him. And then if uh, Abdul Rahman and I hit a hurdle somewhere, guess what? Ahmed, we pick up the phone to Ahmed and I always say, Ahmed, we need some help. There's, a, there's an issue here on a trade barrier or something and, and then he kicks into high gear. So you have a, a trifecta of support for your organization if you're in fact interested in doing business in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. This is the way to do it where we provide you wall-to-wall -wall coverage of 
being secure in knowing that somebody will be with you the entire time as you're uh, venturing into the kingdom to do business, where you're working with a team that will allow nothing to slip through the cracks and uh, will be with you the entire time until your good, your product is actually being sold in the kingdom. So with that, um, I, I think that we'll move on to some questions here that are coming up. Um, and if any time, Ahmed or Abdul, Abdul Rahman, if, if you hear something that's being said that either I'm heading down the wrong path on or you want to add to it, this is the time to jump in. I'm going to read a couple of questions and um, Ahmed or Abdul Rahman, I'm going to leave it to you to decide who should field it. Uh, this one is actually to Abdul Rahman. Uh, Abdul Rahman, how, how do you cross-pollinate investment opportunities from the U.S. with the PIF efforts in expanding their reach into the U.S. with their offices in the East and West Coast? Thank you, Dale. And uh, that's a great question that we, it's always coming up. Uh, so the PIF, just to clear any confusion in case there is the confusion, PIF, their sole mandate is just to, uh, is the sovereign fund, wealth fund of the country is to uh, invest in DDIs and also outflow in terms of international uh, projects. Now for us, we focus on attracting uh, the companies into Saudi. Now there might be a mutual uh, interest for a company that the PIF is investing in such as, for example, the Lucid Motors. Uh, so when the PIF they invest in Lucid Motors, then we help Lucid to come and attract them in terms of opening their manufacturing facility or uh, opening their offices uh, or uh, helping them with uh, local uh, partners or suppliers. So uh, we, we, we are not always involved with the deals with PIF because some of the deals that for strategic decisions, they are just done abroad or in an international uh, country. However, if there's a mutual interest and there is an FDI element, we always come into the table. Wonderful. Good answer. Thank you. Uh, we have a, uh, another question here. Uh, this gentleman, uh, Dr. Said, doctor, I, I, know, I know your product. I know your organization. Your question is, I'm very impressed by the presentation of the honorable gentleman uh, that you have an innovative uh, medical device uh, that already has patented and is ready for global marketing. My question is, who do I submit my request to? Uh, Dr. Said, you just did. Uh, I will be calling you back and, and uh, getting in touch with you. This is the team uh, and the process that I just described uh, is now in place that I think that, that, uh, that your technology definitely has a place in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia and we'll be contacting you directly. Uh, uh, Stephen asks, uh, is there a size of investment and a sector focused for Saudi inve or invest Saudi one? And then two, for opportunities for investment, <clears throat> pardon me, in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia that would require either PIF or Aramco or another major institutional uh, partner would invest Saudi offices assist uh, in getting to those companies or would we go straight there to the institution through the, the way that used to be done and, and, and apply for, uh, go through the process of becoming a um, qualified vendor? Great, yeah. Uh, so in terms of, of uh, sectors, uh, we are focused on the nine key sectors which are uh, derived from the vision 2030. Uh, so these sectors, they are categorized in terms of uh, healthcare, uh, education, uh, tourism, entrepreneurship, industrial equipment, uh, real estate, financial services. So uh, we are quite open when it comes to attracting uh, FDIs and we don't have just a one particular focus. Uh, so we are happy to welcome uh, entrepreneurs, startups, SMEs, and also uh, conglomerates. Uh, 
Now, in terms of the second question, uh, if I get that right, so that the question is, how is the interest, interested company do you want to uh, reach out? And if, are they confused between reaching out to us or the PIF? Now, to clarify, if that's, mm -hmm. if that's the confusion, then they can always start with, with the Invest Saudi brand and with the Ministry of Investment because we can uh, digest the request, we can understand their ask, and then we can, after that, involve the relevant uh, stakeholders accordingly. Great, good answer. So <clears throat> this one is, uh, uh, this next question, gentlemen, uh, I, I believe they're asking from a point of view is the company, this company is asking the industry that we reach uh, has to do with auto, auto parts uh, aftermarket, which means all auto parts, service, labor, uh, et cetera, repaired motor vehicles, cars, trucks, buses, and motorcycles. Um, and the question is, it would be interesting to learn more about Saudi Arabia's involvement in auto parts manufacturing. Is it being done there yet? Is it not? Both from an OEM side and the aftermarket. So I guess the question here is, uh, if there, is there an interest in the kingdom to attract manufacturing for aftermarket auto parts into the kingdom? I, I can uh, start here and maybe also I will uh, pass it to Ahmed if he wants to add also from the trade because uh, auto parts and automotive uh, specifically is uh, a key focus for Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is the largest market in GCC with more than 50% of market share in automotive. Uh, some of the key figures where Saudi is expecting to have 8.7 million vehicles in KSA uh, by 2030. And in 2019, we witnessed a 34% increase in sales uh, in vehicles for Saudi. Uh, now, when it comes to auto part and OEM, uh, we will, in, in the very new future, we will see some announcement with regards to OEM. Uh, and as well as uh, manufacturer and uh, uh, spare parts and auto parts. So this is a key uh, area that we are focusing on attracting all level from OEM to tier one, tier two, and tier three suppliers. Uh, some of the opportunities that exist today, it, it belongs to uh, passenger vehicles of manufacturing, trust manu trucks manufacturing, even uh, buses manufacturing, and as well as tier one and tier two uh, manufacturing plants. Uh, with that, if there are any other information that uh, the people want to get in terms of trade and export and import, Ahmed also can always uh, tap here and, and, and provide more information. Ahmed, I will leave it for you if you would like to add anything about the auto, uh, automotive auto part industry. Uh, yeah, thank you, Abdurrahman. And uh, I've shared my email and my office email. If for any specific question or detailed question, I'll be more than happy to share all the data that we have about the market. Uh, one thing I'd like to add is I don't want people to look at Saudi Arabia as the only market. We are looking at Saudi Arabia as a hub for the region. As I mentioned, we are connected with, with the world. As you're talking about uh, a huge consumption circle around us of uh, open market, uh, Looking at Saudi Arabia as a hub is what we are what we are uh, proposing to everybody. And uh, Abdurrahman and his team here will be more than happy to, as he mentioned, to guide you and to navigate with you the market. And uh, again, please uh, reach out uh, reach out directly uh, for all the questions. I'll be more than happy to send you a detailed data and information about. Uh, uh, auto industry, about the uh, export import in these fields, about the treaties that we have with the United States or with other countries. Uh, thank you. Wonderful. Uh, these are these are great, great answers. Uh, very informative. Uh, this next question, uh, gentlemen, is a, a question that looks like it involves um, I know we've been talking about foreign direct investment into the kingdom but this looks like it might be something where they're looking for investment that could benefit the kingdom and I'll read it uh, and we can discuss. So 
uh, we all know that type 2 diabetes is a major global health concern in general and uh, definitely a concern in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia in particular. How would a company uh, find investors in Saudi Arabia who are willing to invest in clinical studies uh, with Saudi Arabian type two diabetes population as well as patient populations in other geographic regions, including the United States? So I guess the, uh, the question here is to su summarize is, uh, are there opportunities for organizations that are coming up with cures to either come into the kingdom and be supported uh, uh, and find investors to develop these, uh, uh, these treatments and therapeutics for type two diabetes and or uh, uh, a host of others? What is the appetite in the kingdom for that? Yeah, uh, that's also a great question. And uh, healthcare, uh, I would just like to start by saying that Saudi is the largest spender on healthcare in MENA region with uh, $46 uh, billion allocated by the government in 2019. And there are several factors that are driving this significant growth in demand uh, in terms of expenditure. So the population growth by 2030 is expected to grow by 28%. Uh, also increased in people aged over 50 is by 200%. Uh, incidence of chronic diseases uh, is, is more than 60%. So, and as well as diabetes. So uh, the kingdom uh, realized the importance of uh, setting agendas uh, related to preventing and curing uh, uh, healthcare uh, matters. Uh, for that, when it comes to FDIs, uh, we, we don't just look into uh, the cash injected. However, we also look into the uh, technology. We look into the knowledge transfer, uh, the technology transfer, and also uh, if there is an R&D element. Uh, so if the gentleman mentioned that there is uh, a, a clinical solution or uh, it's a product that offers a unique uh, solution to the kingdom, we're always happy to look into it uh, even if there is no cash or FDI uh, figure involved in it, uh, there might, if there is an interest from the kingdom, we might uh, raise funds through the relevant parties in Saudi. Wonderful. So I, I need to make a point here to all of the attendees and participants out there. My friends, uh, as you just witnessed, Abdul Rahman uh, uh, asked a question. He came back with, it, in a enlightening fashion, a specific uh, response and numbers uh, with respect to the healthcare industry and all that, that might seem to you that these are softball questions that we've predetermined. I can guarantee you not this is all him uh, and his knowledge of, of, uh, of these industries, which uh, is just a testament of how uh, these gentlemen and their organizations can benefit you as American companies. They know their stuff. They know the opportunities. Uh, all, all of us will be just as quick to tell you that there might not be an opportunity, uh, but that also provides value to you as well. Uh, but uh, th this, is, this is the team that you, you want to pursue if you have any interest in, in doing business in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, it is now uh, about eight minutes to the top of the hour, and I will, uh, I'm going to have to stop the questioning here. We will get the rest of the unanswered questions addressed and back to you. Uh, I want to thank Abdul Rahman. I want to thank Ahmed. Uh, it, it's, it's a pleasure uh, on a personal note to work with each, each of you uh, individually and together. You've always been supportive and, and uh, a, a terrific resource to go to. And um, I also need to recognize uh, Allison and Andrew from the uh, World Trade Center here in Washington, DC. Uh, they've been terrific in putting this together and masterminding the technology behind this, uh, as well as all of my staff here at the US Saudi Business Council. Um, uh, uh, I would be nowhere, I wouldn't be anywhere without you. Uh, and that's just a simple fact. So with that, I would like to, to now uh, pass it back to Dr. John Duke Anthony, uh, friend and mentor for some closing remarks. No, oh, all right, great. Okay. Uh, listening to all of you, uh, you, Dell, uh, uh, Allison, 
uh, Andrew uh, uh, Abdurrahman Abakar and Ahmed Abu Zanada. Uh, thank you for the privilege of uh, being part of this. And uh, just listening to you, uh, the following uh, ideas, concepts, and thoughts come to mind uh, that have not been expressed, but would be frames of reference for, for further study, uh, insight, and conceptualization. One, uh, Abu, uh, Ahmed Abu Zanada started off by saying that this is not, uh, in his view, a relationship. Uh, so much as a friendship. Now put italics on that word friendship there. The United States has relations with uh, at least 193 countries in the United Nations and more than uh, 200 countries worldwide. But friendships, no. Uh, uh, these would be uh, f fewer than two dozen. So there's an, a special aspect of it. Not they, not those, not them, but us in terms of Saudi Ravens and Americans and Americans and Saudi Ravens. Now, this is uh, rooted in the, the following uh, amongst the other uh, forces and factors and phenomena that the speakers have, have uh, italicized themselves. One is that there are at least 300,000 Saudi Arabian graduates of American institutions of higher education. Think of that. That's more than half of all of the other five Gulf Cooperation Council countries. And I think it would push half of all of the 22 uh, Arab uh, countries. Uh, now for a note of embarrassment, but at the same time opportunity and challenge, the total number of American graduates of these countries, uh, institutions of higher education, if you're charitable and round them up to the nearest even number is zero. So there's a, a massive imbalance of knowledge and understanding and information and insight about one another. And herein itself is, is an opportunity as Abdul, uh, uh, Abdul Rahman al uh mentioned uh, in the second quarter, these breakthroughs and new educational uh, initiatives. And as both of them uh, mentioned uh, since the beginning of the year, uh, some uh, 400 plus uh, new ventures between uh, American entities and their Saudi Arabian counterparts. That may look like a typographical error, but it is the envy of the rest of the world with, with India, as I mentioned, coming up with the inside lane in second place. So they're not only the 300,000 uh, graduates, all of whom virtually without exception to my knowledge, being uh, pro-American, uh, uh, biased towards American goods, services, and products and thoroughly familiar with American um, uh, standards, weights, and measures. Indeed, for more than a quarter of a century, uh, Saudi Arabia has had a standards uh, uh, organization, which uh, the other five GCC countries have um, uh, integrated with. So those standards uh, exist throughout the six uh, GCC countries. Further, Further. Saudi Arabia has more than three, uh, uh, three, 30 uh, chambers of commerce. This number is more than all of the chambers of commerce in the entire 22 uh, other, uh, 21 other Arab countries combined. Think of that. So if you were looking for an indication for atmospheric receptivity, for the moment uh, forever being propitious, for reaching out in the private sector investment and trade technology cooperation in the nine sectors that uh, Abdul Rahman Baka uh, uh, mentioned of uh, healthcare, education, tourism, industrialization, entrepreneurship, real estate, financial services, small, medium sized enterprises, and co conglomerates. All nine of those sectors have opportunities uh, waiting uh, for an American outstretched hand. Uh, with the receptivity at the other end of the uh, bridge. And speaking of a bridge, both of these gentlemen are bridges. Uh, they too have been educated in the West and are thoroughly familiar with American goods, products, institutions, individuals, services, values, ideals, and principles. Uh, they have not been uh, educated in the Eastern Bloc, so to speak, uh, with uh, uh, principles and concepts and ways of doing business quite at odds with those of the West in general and the United States in particular. So uh, Ahmed Abu Zanada, he is at both ends of the bridge. He's, and he is 
the bridge also himself, as is of the Rahman al Bakr there. A mention was made of Saudi Arabia being elected chairman of the G20 countries. Up until uh, 12 years ago, there were a sort of the G7 and the G8 of the industrialized uh, democracies of the West plus uh, Japan. But if uh, people's memory serve them well, in 2007 and 2008, that was the international li liquidity crisis, sometimes referred to as a subprime uh, crisis there. And this was uh, a situation where the United States in particular came to these countries, Saudi Arabia in particular, but also Kuwait and Qatar and the United Arab Emirates, and asked for a bailout. And these countries reacted by saying, look, we have reached a point where we've always been with you on the crash landing. But from this point forward, we want to be with you on the takeoff. And so with that, we had no choice but to adapt and accommodate and accept. They had the better argument. And therein lies the seeds of the G20 with Saudi Arabia representing uh, the other six uh, GCC countries and the other 21 uh, Arab uh, uh, countries. Tourism uh, is something that people would have thought was a misnomer uh, 20 years ago. But the ease um, with which one can obtain a visa uh, to uh, travel inside the kingdom to see its extraordinary range and diversity of archaeological sites and historical sites and museums. These uh, are world-class museums. We're not talking about just local museums, regional museums talking about, yes, local ones and regional ones, but national uh, ones as well. So these are just uh, a few uh, of the uh, ending comments. I did mention that Saudi Arabia is one of 22 uh, League of Arab States countries, but it's also the captain of the team of 28 Middle Eastern countries and also 57 members of the organization of the Islamic Conference. Um, time is up and we, we've had a, a, a nice, what I like to call a cerebral massage. Uh, and so all of us uh, are more learned than we were before we began uh, this uh, uh, engaging event uh, headed by Dell Roosevelt. And we love our relationship with Saudi Arabian US Business Council. Uh, we work together, we're joined at the hip. We're like Sami's twins, thank you. Dr. Anthony, so thank you so much for contextualizing what we heard today in closing. On behalf of the World Trade Center Washington DC, I'd like to thank all of our distinguished speakers for their valuable time and offering us their expansive insights on the very unique business and investment opportunities available in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. I'd also like to thank our viewers for joining us this morning. We hope you'll follow us for future programming and I wish you a fabulous day. Thank you so much.